Hello and welcome to our latest online service here at Christchurch in Forward in Preston. Uh, this service is for Christ the King, the last Sunday before Advent and here at Christchurch, our patronal festival. It's lovely to have you with us. It is a shame that we can't, cannot be in church to celebrate on this day as we would normally gather together, have a wonderful service of praise and renew our commitment to God as we celebrate his presence among us and the witness of our church in this community uh, since it was founded in 1865. It's, as I say, a shame that we cannot uh, be gathered today and to meet together in fellowship afterwards with uh, a bring and share lunch, or as uh, since I've arrived, I've learned to call it a Jacob's Join. Uh, but we gather together online and we remember that God is still with us, his presence is loving, and he still calls us to follow him in the circumstances that we find ourselves in today. And we today conclude our service of our theme of friendship. And Mandy will be speaking to us on being friends with the King later in this service. A few notices as we begin our service. And all of them are really looking forward to, to Advent, which begins next Sunday. We have a number of things going on. Firstly, uh, if you've seen our invitation to make a poster of your favourite Christmas carol or song and display it in your window through Advent to try and bring some joy to our neighbourhood, encourage you to get your pens and pencils and paints and colouring crayons out and draw a picture of your favourite carol or Christmas song and put it in the window uh, so that those who go by can see it and know that we are uh, beginning to think about the coming of Jesus at Christmas. Uh, secondly, uh, there are a number of Advent resources uh, that are around. We've, our Advent course will begin on th uh, the Thursday, the 4th of December. So that's the first Thursday in Advent. And it will be online via Zoom. If you want to be part of that, uh, please drop me an email and I will send you the Zoom link. Uh, alternatively, it will also be on our parish emails that go out. And we're going to be thinking about uh, living a life of faith in the world uh, using uh, some resources on a DVD called Living Distinctively, interviewing people about how in their different contexts they engage with their faith. And so we'll be thinking about some of the issues that come from that. It should be a really good discussion that we're able to have together. Also, the diocese has produced a Lent resource, a booklet going through Isaiah. If you haven't had a copy and you would like one, please again drop me a line and I will make sure one gets to you. And thinking about that, our Advent services, the first three Sundays in Advent, will also pick up the lectionary reading in Isaiah and think about our longing for God as we do so uh, in this time. Finally, there is the, uh, we mentioned it last week and it's been on our emails, the Bishop's Appeal to Pray and Give uh, in this time leading up to Advent. Uh, we reflect on the fact that coronavirus has had a number of impacts across our communities and the church has not been immune to that and one of the impacts has been financial. If you are able to make a one-off gift to your local church, uh, in our case Christchurch, uh, we would really appreciate it to be able to enable us to fulfil our obligations to the diocese and also to meet our ongoing costs. Um, if you want to know more, please uh, do drop me a line. I'll be very happy to talk with you. We have gift envelopes and gift aid forms um, available to help with that if you would like one. And so let us begin our worship. Uh, the words to join in with will appear on the screen, so each response will appear as a subtitle. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Blessed are you, Lord our God. How sweet your words are to the taste, sweeter than honey to the mouth. How precious your commandments are for our life, more than the finest gold in our hands. How marvellous is your will for the world. Unending is your love for the nations. Our voices shall sing of your promises and our lips declare your praise forever and ever. Amen. As we come into God's presence and as we reflect upon his call upon our lives, we remember that we do not always manage to walk in his ways and so we come to a time of confession. We remember that Jesus calls us 
to love God with all our heart, mind, soul and strength and to love our neighbour as ourselves. And we hear again these words of Jesus. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And our response when I say, Father, forgive us, would you respond, save us and help us. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by the temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. And so may the God of all healing and forgive us draw us to himself, and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here at Christ Church, our vision statement is to be a church that connects people to Jesus Christ and to one another. And so on this, our patronal, as we gather virtually, I invite us to take a moment's silence to reflect upon that, and that calling for our lives, as we know Jesus' forgiveness within us, to think how we can live that out as individuals and as a community. To reflect on how we can maintain our connection to Jesus Christ. to reflect on what we can do to help others connect to Jesus Christ. And to reflect on what we can do to connect others to each other and to help build a loving community here at Christchurch. We believe God calls us to be a church that connects people to Jesus Christ and to one another. Our prayer for today. God our Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so I invite you to join in with me in saying these words from Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 to the end. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words that I speak be the words that God wants you to hear. I wonder how you pray for Christ Church, if you do. Would that be any different if you knew that your prayer would be read out to the congregation in the building on Sunday morning or here on YouTube? And I wonder how someone who'd never met most of our congregation would pray for us based purely on what they'd heard about us. 
My guess is that most of our prayers ask for things, not necessarily selfish things, like, I hope that the music this week includes lots of hymns or worship songs that I like, but prayers that we would be faithful, that we would serve God. Maybe we pray for wisdom and good leadership from our clergy and our bishops. The author of this letter, probably Paul, though there's some debate about that, does that, but it's not his first thought. He starts by giving thanks and praise to God. Before this passage starts, he praises God for everything God's done for us. And here he says he never stops thanking God for the people he's writing to. He thanks God for their faith and for their love for each other. In essence, he thanks God for God's friends. So what does it mean to be friends with God? What does it mean to be friends with the King? Anyone who's studied history will know that being friends with a human king or with those in power can bring certain perks. The history of England and of other countries is full of stories of royal favourites who took advantage of their position to acquire wealth, jobs, titles and lands. Sometimes they even manage to hang on to them long enough to pass them on to their descendants. Sometimes they got above themselves or upset too many people and fell from favour disastrously. Some might say things aren't all that different today. But being friends with God isn't like that. You don't get those sort of perks. As Liz pointed out to us last week, Jesus didn't start a clique. There aren't usually advantageous jobs or contracts for the boys or for the girls. It's often quite the opposite. Perhaps a better analogy comes from looking at the friends of fictional heroes. Being a hero's friend in a book or film doesn't always mean fame and fortune. It can mean being the person that the hero trusts to support them, to do the nasty jobs, to take risks. Think of Sam and Frodo in The Lord of the Rings, struggling to Mordor, supporting each other. Think of Ron and Hermione and even Neville in the Harry Potter stories. Think of the people who get caught up in Indiana Jones's adventures. To misquote the Spider-Man films, with great friendship comes great responsibility. And friendship with God carries the responsibility of expressing God in the world, being Christ's body, being, as Paul says, the fullness of him who fills all in all. That's a big ask. Paul thanks God for the faith and the love of the people he's writing to. And in this week that the Church of England's Living in Love and Faith resources have been released, it's worth reminding ourselves that faith in God and God's Word and love for our fellow Christians and fellow human beings aren't an either or choice. We are called to both. But as well as giving thanks for his fellow Christians, Paul prays that they would have spiritual wisdom and insight. Not so that they can be more successful. This isn't wisdom as a superpower. But so they would know the hope to which they are called, know the riches of God's inheritance, and know God's power, the power of the resurrection and power over the cosmos, so that they would know who they serve. 
In the worship song, King of Kings, Majesty, the writer speaks of God as the strong deliverer, worshipped by earth and heaven, but also as the gentle saviour and closest friend. And his response to that friendship is to bow, to lay my all before you. And he finishes, in royal robes I don't deserve, I live to serve your majesty. This is what it means to be friends with the king. The royal robes are ours, not by merit, but because of the king we serve. And perhaps our prayer for Christchurch, for the Church of England, for the whole of God's church, should be, like Paul's, a prayer of praise and thanksgiving, and a prayer for wisdom and insight into our King, so that we might serve him and others better. And so reflecting on all that we have just heard from Scripture and from Mandy, we affirm our faith in some of the words that will appear on the screen. And what I have done for today is I have taken the Apostles' Creed and I have woven it together with our vision statement so that we can affirm what God calls us as part of the one apostolic church to be part of the fellowship of faith, but also our particular calling as Christ Church here in Fulwood in Preston. As a church, we affirm that we are part of the one worldwide church and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father who created heaven and earth. We believe in God the Son who redeemed the world and called us to be his own. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who lives in our hearts through faith. At Christ Church, we affirm that God calls us to connect people to Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus is the only Son of the Father, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He lived to show us God's love and died that we might be forgiven. Crucified, died and buried, he rose again on the third day and ascended into heaven. He now lives as our Lord and Saviour seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to call us home and judge the living and the dead. At Christ Church, we affirm that God calls us to connect people to one another. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who lives in our hearts through faith. The one Spirit makes us one in Jesus and breaks down all barriers of race, status or gender. Through the Spirit, we learn to forgive as Jesus forgave, love as Jesus loved, and reach out to others in the name of Jesus. At Christ Church, we hold to the faith of the Christian Church, and we believe that God calls us to be a community that connects people to Jesus Christ and to each other. God of heaven, living in me, gentle saviour, closest friend, Lord Jesus, thank you for being our friend as we reflect on this Upper Trone Week where we, as a church, Christ Church, called after you and for you. We reflect on all the times that you have been there for us, good and bad, where you have given us help and support and comfort like any friend would. But Lord Jesus, you give us so much more. Lord Jesus, we can but bow. Thank you for being our friend. Earth and heaven worship you. Love eternal, faithful and true. Lord Jesus, thank you for being our friend. As we come to you to ask your forgiveness for all the things that we should, we should not have done this last week, and for all the things that we should have done, but have for one reason or another not done. Please help us when we are in the wrong and help us to give others too. Lord Jesus, we can but bow. Thank you for being our friend. Who brought the nations, ransomed souls. 
Lord Jesus, thank you for being our friend as we remember those less fortunate than ourselves. For the people of this church and parish who are struggling in this current location lockdown, whether it be emotional or financially, help us to lean on you just a little bit more at this time so you can help us through and out the other side. When we will look back when this time is all over and we have all received the protection of a vaccination and be able to thank you once more. We pray for those in hospital or are ill and for those recovering from illness in our parish. Especially at this time, we pray for Bill Seddon and the family of Dennis Bisham and also for the family of Patrick Peacock. We also take a few moments to remember people near to us that we need your prayers. Lord Jesus, we can but bow. Thank you for being our friend. Your Majesty, I can but bow. I lay my all before you now. Lord Jesus, we thank you for our clergy and those in leadership. We pray that you will be with them and guide them. Give them wisdom, especially when difficult decisions have to be made. Give our government your guidance to do what is right for this country. Lord Jesus, we can but bow. Thank you for being our friend. All within me cries out in praise. Lord Jesus, we praise you at this time of our patronal and always and give thanks for bringing us through thus far. We pray that you will continue to do so through the next year ahead. Lord Jesus, we can but bow. Thank you for being our friend. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour. Amen. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength. My song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter. Scheme of man can 
so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so may Christ our King make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>